Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another video on the benefits of preserved foods. And this one is about dehydrated foods in particular. Now I recently did a video on why I do not have a freeze dryer. And the funny thing was, after doing some more research just in order to put out that particular video on the differences of dehydrated foods and freeze dried foods, I've definitely come to the conclusion that I am not interested in a freeze dryer. That's my own personal choice. We all have to make our choices that are going to suit us best. But since in general, I prefer dehydrated foods, most dehydrated foods over freeze dried foods, and how inexpensive it is to dehydrate foods and to can foods, I'm going to be sticking with these methods as well as freezing. But I'll link to that video down below about the freeze dried versus dehydrated and Let's go ahead and talk about the benefits of dehydrated foods. As I mentioned in that video, as opposed to freeze dried foods and canned foods, dehydrated foods take up way less room. Because a lot of people don't realize that freeze dried foods, especially if you're going to store them in jars anyway, like I like to do instead of plastic, because I try to get away from plastic as much as possible, your freeze dried foods in jars are going to take up the same amount of room as your canned foods are in jars. But when you're talking dehydrated foods, they shrink down much smaller than your freeze dried foods because freeze dried foods will hold their same shape and size. And I explain all that in that video and why that is where dehydrated foods, they shrink down in the dehydration process as the moisture is being removed. So this right here is one of the best examples and this is zucchini. And I can put about eight regular size zucchinis in this one quart jar simply by chopping it up and dehydrating it so it's going to take up far less room this way than either freeze dried or canned so this is my favorite way to store my excess zucchini and i use it in a lot of things and the great thing about zucchini is it has such a mild flavor that can go well in anything you can rehydrate it but mostly when you're talking dehydrated foods if I'm going to cook them at all, I'm going to be throwing them directly into a soup or a sauce or a gravy and let them cook as those things are cooking anyway or thickening up. And it'll rehydrate just fine that way. If you need to, you can rehydrate your, your dehydrated foods separately, pretty much the same way you would your freeze dried foods. And if I do that separately, which is rare, but I do sometimes, let's say it's something I'm going to want to use in a stir fry, so I don't have a lot of liquid in the stir fry for the dehydrated things to absorb, then I will go ahead and soak them in a warm mixture, usually uh, something with a little bit of homemade wine. If it's going to be a, an Asian dish, I might use some Bragg's liquid aminos or even coconut aminos in that to add some more flavor as it's rehydrating the food. So dehydrated food, generally speaking, though you can eat it directly from the jar or whatever package you decide to put it in, you might not be into that. So both of these things can need some rehydration or cooking before use. This is why freeze dried, even though the initial preserving process is going to hold more vitamin C and A than dehydrating or canning. In the end, once you go to cook them, those are the same nutrients you're going to lose anyway when you cook them. And those are pretty much the only nutrients being measured when they do the comparisons between freeze dried, dehydrated, canning, and blah, 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 blah. It's just the A and C because those are the two vitamins you're going to lose right off the bat. And even if you're just storing your foods in a, in a clear jar and you're letting it get a lot of light exposure or heat exposure, you're still going to lose the A and C. But your carbohydrates, your calories, your minerals, and most of your other vitamins are still going to remain intact. If there's something that doesn't rehydrate super well, like a dehydrated chicken, for example. Now, I love the dehydrated chicken right out of the jar, just a snack on. But if you're wanting to use it in a dish, then it's you're better off for some of those things if they're dehydrated as opposed to freeze dried than to go ahead and powder them before using them in something because leaving them in whole pieces, they're just gonna be too tough. Now, dehydrated 
burger. It doesn't matter if it's elk, venison, or beef. This is excellent. I love this. In fact, I like this far better than canning it. Not only does it take up less room, I know I can open the jar, use a little bit of it, vacuum seal it back up. I don't have to go through a whole jar at once if I don't want to. And of course you can always can in smaller jars, but I just like the texture of this this turns out better when I'm throwing it in soups and sauces so my mo the way I've used it mostly is to put into my Italian sauces where I want meat in them I just throw some of this in there and it's great I love it now freeze-dried items this wasn't supposed to be a comparison between the two but it's kind of hard not to compare freeze-dried does rehydrate quicker and better usually than your dehydrated but most of your dehydrated foods, just like freeze-dried foods, can be powdered up as long as you get them fully dry. Usually your fruits are gonna be the harder ones to get. They, they tend to stay more pliable. And so I look at dehydrated fruits as something I'd rather just snack on as is, rather than using in a dish. However, dehydrated apples work great in a lot of things. You can cook those right up. You can, I've made, a dehydrated apple pie it's excellent you can cook up those dehydrated apples and turn it into applesauce or apple butter or whatever you want apples are the, one of the things that i would suspect pears as well that once dehydrated up you can either powder them or just cook them and use them in a pie or jams or whatever it is that you would like to use that in rhubarb is not a fruit it is a vegetable but rhubarb dehydrates up beautifully look at the color this is from this past year and it also cooks up beautifully. It does take a little bit more time, but you can just add water to this and cook it and then turn this also, mix it with some of your other dehydrated fruits and turn that into a jam or a pie filling or whatever you want to do with it. So you can do a lot with dehydrated foods. I think people don't realize that they can and you can dehydrate pretty much anything. It's just, you're not gonna have the same texture or even flavor with your dehydrated foods as you will some of your freeze dried. But with, for me, when it comes to vegetables, I have yet, except for corn, which isn't actually a vegetable anyway, corn's the only freeze dried non-fruit thing that I like, but everything else I prefer dehydrated. I like the flavor and the texture and everything so much better. And then fruit, there's a lot of fruits I, I really like freeze-dried, but if I didn't have the ability to freeze-dry them or to purchase them freeze-dried, I could live easily without them. And like I said before, pineapple also dehydrates up wonderfully. You get a little bit different flavor with dehydrated pineapple as you do freeze-dried, and the texture is very different, but they are both amazingly delicious. They're just different. And I wouldn't say I liked one better than the other. I would just be more apt to use the freeze-dried pineapple for powdering up and flavoring things like I did with the pineapple banana coconut bread. But to just snack on, dehydrated pineapple is amazing. I love it. Here, I'm just gonna give you a few other examples of things I've dehydrated. Now, the white onions in here, well, they look yellow, are ones I got from Mother Earth products because I haven't been able to grow really good onions, just like full, like Walla Wallas or red onions in years for some crazy reason. So I'll just go ahead and stock up on the dehydrated onions from Mother Earth products, but I can grow green onions like nobody's business. And so these green onions that I just harvested the other day, dehydrated up and mixed in with these, now I have a dual onion blend that I can add to my soup sauces and more. And that's what I like to do mostly with my dehydrated stuff, as I said. But uh, here's some other ideas. Your citrus peels, in particular orange and lemon. Uh, lime and grapefruit can be pretty bitter. So unless you're gonna use it as a soap addition for color and, and scent, I recommend sticking with the orange and the lemon because these can be used in teas to add a little more nutrition to them. I powder them up too. And I use them a lot in flavoring. In fact, I have a video just on how I use dehydrated orange peels. And I only use the orange peels or lemon peels from the ones I can buy organically, not the non-organic ones. And then any kind of herb or root that you already grow. So here's some marshmallow root. Again, just like always, I just grab a few things that are hand, the, the quickest for me to grab to show you. But marshmallow root, chicory root, or the leaves, or the flowers, or the greens. Any kind of herb can be dehydrated. Here I've got 
peppermint from my garden for making teas with. This is a pumpkin from last year that I dehydrated. You can either puree, cook and puree your pumpkin and dehydrate it and powder it. But what would be even easier is to just go ahead and dehydrate it raw into chunks and then powder it up when you need it. Here's some dehydrated honeysuckle flowers that I use in my homemade skin cream. Here's some dehydrated just regular tomatoes. I also have, this is my favorite way to dehydrate tomatoes is to puree them, put them out like a fruit leather on my dehydrator trays, and then I flake them up and store them like this. These are great for using in soups and sauces or just for thickening up sauces. But anyway, these are just a few examples, and here are some jalapeno peppers. These actually go back to 2015. They still have a lot of great color to them and are still good. So once you vacuum seal them into jars, just like your canned foods, your freeze-dried foods, or anything, as long as you keep them in a cool, dry, and dark place, they're going to hold their color, their nutrients, their flavor a lot better by keeping them out of the heat and the light. But they can last for a great many years in jars like this, at least 10 to 15 years minimum. And a lot of times when they give you that, that doesn't mean they're spoiled after 10 or 15 years. It just might mean that the quality is not near as good after 10 or 15 years. For example, I have found with uh, dehydrated bananas, they are one of the fruits that really lose their quality after the first year of dehydrating and then stored like this. So different fruits and vegetables are going to have a different length of time as far as quality goes. That does not mean whenever you read something that says, you know, that lasts a certain amount of time, what they're, they're not talking about spoilers. They're talking about the quality of the food and how much nutrients it's holding, how much flavor it's holding, how good the texture is, and so on. That's usually all that means. After that time, as long as everything is still sealed and you don't smell anything rotten, it's still good. Just like home canned foods can last for indefinitely as long as they stay sealed and stay protected from heat and light they're just going to lose quality over time. And just like your canned foods, you don't have to freeze or refrigerate any of these things. So they're not taking up room in your cold storage in that way. You just have to have a cool dark pantry or maybe a, an old bedroom you converted into a pantry to keep these things in. And dehydrating is so easy to do and far less expensive than freeze drying with a lot less maintenance which is why another reason why i prefer it over the freeze drying and, and just know i don't have any experience with actually freeze drying i have bought freeze dried goods i've tried different ones find out what i like best and then i just stock up on those things i like best for just adding flavor to my pantry but i don't again i could live without them if i had to but dehydrating is so easy to do you don't even have to buy a dehydrator if you have let's say a wood stove you can use in the winter time for dehydrating or you haven't you live in a, a dry warm climate that you don't have to worry about a lot of rain and humidity you can dehydrate things just on a rack anywhere or even inside your vehicle and that doesn't cost you any extra money other than maybe having to purchase some racks so i have a video i did on methods of dehydration so that people can find out what works best for them or even just create their own type of setup and I go over quite a few ideas and show you some images of other people's ideas that they've done plus I talk about what we have we have both electric dehydrators and we have a, a some racks that Patrick built that I use either on top of the wood stove or next to the wood stove depending on what I'm drying most of the time it's next to the wood stove but if I'm doing something like an elk venison or beef jerky I'm going to do that on top of the wood stove so it's sort of baked it while it's drying it and then I preserve that in jars just like this I've had jerky as long as you get all the moisture out of it you don't have to get all the fat out you as long as you vacuum seal it into a jar and it stays that way it'll last for years on your shelf without fear <laughs> just think about this you buy jerky in plastic bags at the store how much better do you think that's going to be in something like a glass jar so you're not getting that plastic exposure now, some things I haven't tried yet, but I know people have done it with dehydrating is eggs and dairy products. Now, again, I haven't done this myself. I like to freeze the eggs for my chicken. That's just my preferred way of doing it. 
and there's many other ways to preserve eggs that I talk about in another video, which I'll be linking to down below. But I also know people have dehydrated, not just freeze dried, but dehydrated their eggs from their chickens to preserve them or dehydrating dairy products. I haven't tried it myself and I probably won't because we don't have uh, any dairy animals. So I have to buy milk anyway. So if I'm going to buy milk anyway, I'll buy organic fresh milk and then I'll buy the highest quality dried you know whole milk powder that i can find as well as some other dairy products like the real butter powder and so on i have videos on a lot of these the heavy cream powder these are great things to have in your food storage and i love them but if you have chickens and dairy animals and you want to dehydrate these items yourself it can be done it could also be canned but we're talking about dehydrating. And again, if you know anyone that has some good information on how to dehydrate these items, go ahead and share those down below as well on the dairy and on the eggs. And then the other thing about dehydrated foods, I think I forgot to mention was that dehydrated foods, just like freeze dried foods are gonna be a lot lighter weight. So if you're wanting to use them for camping or if you're, you gotta run and you wanna pack up a bunch of food, obviously packing up your dehydrated and freeze-dried foods are going to be a lot easier because they're going to be a lot lighter weight than packing your jars of chili green beans or whatever that you have that you've canned so every fruit food preservation method has its benefits it has its pros and cons so what i'm trying to focus on in, in this little video series i'm doing is the benefits of these different methods and i recommend that you have at least two or three different methods outside of freezing freezing is great and has its benefits but i recommend at least having a way to, to dry your foods and a way to can your foods and learn both of these skills those are the two most important ones because if you lose your electricity and you don't have a backup power source or your freezer just up and dies because that happens too you got to know how you're going to be able to preserve that food and do it right away. So if I have a lot of stuff in our freezer. If I had to, if that freezer died and I couldn't get a backup freezer soon enough, then I would quickly get to town canning and dehydrating the foods that are in there and whatever I could. I'd be having stuff running all the time just to make sure that I had that. If it's a matter of losing power, that's not an issue because we have several different forms of backup power to keep our freezers going. So that's another thing you wanna make sure you look into, especially if you're depending on your freezers and fridge to store some of your foods. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any more benefits you would like to share about dehydrated foods, not freeze dried, dehydrated foods because that's what this is supposed to be about then go ahead and share that down below what do you like to dehydrate the most what is your favorite dehydrated foods and what is your favorite way to use them all right well i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching take care and god bless